So this question is question 6 from June 2013 and I thought it was quite a nice question to do because it incorporates a lot of things. It's got a parallel circuit and it's got an internal resistance. So I thought it would be useful thing to have a go through. So the first question says show that the potential difference across the internal resistance is 6.3 volts. So let's have a look at the information that we've been given. So you've been told that the current, I, is equal to 4.2 amps. You know that the resistance of the internal resistance, R, is 1.5 ohms. So we're going to use Ohm's law, so we need V equals I, R, 0.2 times 1.5, which equals 6.3 volts. So we've got to the correct answer there just by applying Ohm's law to this situation. Nice and easy. So the next part wants you to calculate what the potential difference is across the 2 ohm resistor. So first of all we have to work out what the terminal potential difference is for here. Now that's the potential difference you would measure when at the points where you connect the cell to it. So by the point time it reaches the terminal, it's already gone through the internal resistance. So the terminal voltage you measure V is equal to the EMF of the cell minus the, the potential drop across your internal resistor. So we know the EMF is 12 because you were given it in the question and we've just in the previous question calculated what the potential drop is so we know that, that gets left with 5.7 volts now if we look at our circuit that voltage is applied to both the 2.0 ohm resistor and the R because obviously those are in parallel so that means that the potential difference across the 2 ohm resistor is that 5.74 volts the terminal potential difference So the next question wants to know, what, well, what's the current through it? So obviously current in a circuit we need to get from using another, using Ohm's law. So we're using, we've got V equals IR. So rearranging that, we know that I equals V divided by R. We know our potential difference across the two in resistor is 5.7. So we divide that by 2.8. Zero, and we get 2.85 amps. Okay. So the next thing to do is it asks you to determine the current through R. Now the key thing is here is to apply one of Kirchhoff's laws, and it's the law that governs the conservation the conservation of charge which in this case means you have must conserve current. So we're going to look at this node here. Let's make it nice and big so it's obvious what I'm looking at. Looking at this node here. So what the law tells you is the sum of the current currents going into a node is equal to the sum of the currents going out of it. So let's look at our node in a bit more detail. So going into that node we've got the 4.2 amps and coming out of it, we've got two directions. This thing we calculated in the previous question, which was at 2.85 amps, and we've got our unknown value. Okay. So, applying the Kirchhoff's law, which says charge is going to be conserved, we know that 4.2 must be equal to 2.85 plus the unknown current which in this case is the current going through R so so the current through R is going to be equal to 4.2 subtract 2.85 which gives you a overall current of 
three, five amps going through the resistor R. So the next part obviously wants you to calculate what the resistance of R is. So we're going to be using a rearranged version of Ohm's law yet again for this question. So rearranging that, R equals V divided by I. Now we know what V is because we know that the potential difference across parallel components must be the same, so it must be equal to the 5.7 volts again. And the current we've just calculated as 1.35 amps. So that gives you a resistance of 4.2 amps. Approximately. So the next thing it asks you is to calculate the total resistance of the circuit. So the thing to recognise, like I talked about in the other video, is that you've got these two resistors here that are in parallel with each other. So we're going to need to apply a parallel rule to that. And then we've got this internal resistor up here, which is in series with both of those resistors. So we need to calculate the resistance of the parallel set and then add on to that the series one. So let's calculate the one of the parallel, and I'm going to call that RP. So we know that 1 over RP is equal to 1 over 2.0 plus 1 divided by 4.2. This gives you um, means 1 over how oh, is equal to 0 0.737 which gives you RP is equal to 1.35 ohms and so to give you the R total so that, that parallel set of resistance is in series with the internal resistance so to calculate that, obviously you just add them together. So you've got 1.5 plus 1.35 gives you 2.85 ohms. So this question is asking you to calculate the power dissipated by each of the resistors. So obviously the important thing to know here is that P is equal to I squared times R. So for the internal resistance, that's the I going through it was 4.2. So that's squared times 1.5 is equal to 26.5 watts. So let's write that in this way down there. But through the 2 ohm resistor we had a current 2.85 and so we square that times by 2.0 to sorry, about 16.2 so let's put that in that space there. And through R we using the numbers that we calculated we had point Three five is the current squared times by the resistance of R, which was four point two, and that gives you seven point seven watts. Okay, so that gives you that part. So if you're going to show energy is conserved, you need to show the total energy going into the circuit is equal to the total energy coming out. But what you can also say is if the total energy is going in and out must be the same, then the total power going in and out must be the same as well. So let's calculate the power going into the circuit. So power 
IV, which is 4.2 times 12, because it's 50.4 watts. So that's going in, it's being input into the circuit. So if energy is going to be conserved, then you're going to get the same amount out. Total, so total dissipated. So it's basically the sum of the numbers that we've just calculated before. And if we add all those numbers together, hey presto, we get 50.4 watts. So, so the total energy per second is the it's going to be the same for input and output so energy is conserved okay and that's how you go about solving that question